Okay, Jen, thank you so much for making time out of your busy schedule, girl. You are up to so many things. And I was just saying before we started that I am so, so, so excited to talk to you. Um, you know, there's it, the timing of this conversation feels very aligned for my own personal curiosity and you know being in this i just turned 43 last sunday not this last sunday sunday before and so you know being an absolute geek and, and attaining a lot of knowledge in you know physiology biology uh nutrigenomics being an athlete so lately when i say lately i mean it's been some time now i've just been so deeply curious about cycle syncing and really the menstrual cycle, you know, I'm still a menstruating woman and I'm, I'm like the rare woman who loves her period because A, I know it's not going to last forever. I know. Uh -huh. That's why. Yep. Me and too. it's like, I, right. And so when I found you, you know, you did an incredible podcast um, with Jason Phillips and I was like, oh my gosh, I love her. And it just, you know, did, did this happen to you where you get really into something and then the books show up or the people show up and then, uh -huh. right? So you mm -hmm. came into my orbit and I know, you know, the value of the conversation that we're about to have is obviously not just for me, but it is for every single woman. I, I would say even men to understand oh, their yes. female partners, right? hundred mm -hmm. so percent. I'm yeah. I feel like a great place to start. I mean, first of all, you're a nutrition coach or a health coach. I mean, you have so many certifications you are a badass athlete and you are getting ready uh, if i'm correct to launch your cycle syncing program is that correct mm -hmm. yes so a coach's exciting. course mm -hmm. so so yes. awesome so do you want to start with what what brought you to let's start with this can we start with what cycle syncing even is Yes. So cycle syncing is basically taking your naturally fluctuating hormones and maximizing your efforts to do what those hormones are meant to do. Like if you're supposed to have more energy, like maximize the energy associated with the estrogen. If you're supposed to be a little bit calmer, like maximize the energy and what progesterone is meant to do, like listen to your body. So basically you're taking those superpowers essentially that as a woman we have and you're maximizing your efforts within those. So you're harnessing your natural superpowers to conquer the world basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, I love that because, you know, number one, it's very empowering. I mean, understanding your health and, and being in the driver's seat of your health period is so empowering. And it's, you know, a huge driver of the passion that I have for it. But when we start getting into the menstrual cycle and working with your, you know, your body, your biology, your physiology to, to, to not just be baseline, but to be optimizing, um, that's a big deal. And a lot of women, you know, including myself in the past, I didn't realize how much power I actually have. And gratefully, historically, I've never been one to have, you know, real issues with my cycle. Like I don't have hard periods or anything, but actually it's important to say that because you don't, it's not even about that. You, you, some people do, some people don't, but it's about like what you just said, it's pull, tapping into these superpowers that relate back to your hormones so that you can essentially move through your life like a superpower. <laughs> I mean, the yes. superhero. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All I we need is a cape. Mm -hmm. Right? So if, if you're okay with it, you know, a lot of our listeners and viewers are already dialed into estrogen and progesterone, but there's a lot who aren't. And I think that's really important to set the table for this conversation. Cortisol, can we, can we just touch on, you know, those hormones and, and really how they're affecting us in our cycle throughout the month? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, just kind of take what a natural cycle should look like. So we have menstruation. So that is day one is the first day of a woman's bleed. So that's day one of your cycle. So after menstruation, so at menstru menstruation, basically progesterone and estrogen reach their lowest points. So your hormones are at their lowest points. Then thereafter, estrogen begins to rise. It peaks just before ovulation. Then it drops off, has a big drop off and progesterone rises. There's a second lesser rise of estrogen in that second half of the cycle. So 
as estrogen rises, consider the first half of a woman's cycle, kind of like all resources are put outwards. So energy is higher, recovery is higher, strength is higher. Right before ovulation, women actually have a, a little bump of testosterone. So that gives a little extra strength and competitiveness right there at ovulation. Then progesterone rises, it has more of a calming effect on the body. So, you know, basically resources turn inward during that time. So it's important to know that, you know, if a woman doesn't feel as much energy during the second half of her cycle, it's because her body is prioritizing the potential of reproduction. So at that point, basically everything turns inward. As progesterone peaks about mid luteal phase, the last half of the cycle, it drops off, triggering an inflammatory response, which can trigger extra water retention. Mm -hmm. And with progesterone, we have unstable blood sugars. So hanger, irritability, all those things that we love going in our <laughs> cycle. Um, so basically during the first half, estrogen has an increase in energy. Progesterone makes us feel a little bit more calm and laid back and then gives rise to a little more inflammation and a slower recovery rate. So that's so huge. I mean, there's so many things in there. Um, you know, we were kind of, I was sharing with you before we started, you know, just whatever it was a week ago, I'm, I'm about four, four days out of my cycle, like starting my period. And, um, you know, last, last week, it was just all of a sudden, and I should say this, and most of my listeners know, you know, when it comes to diet and training, like I'm dialed in, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, it's just the way that I eat is very protein centric. I don't do processed foods, sugar. And all of a sudden, in like two days, I'm like my face is puffy. My definition is, and I'm like, oh fuck. And I'm dialed in into like knowing like what's happening because I've been like, geeking out on the subject. Still not fun though. I'm like, oh, yeah. progesterone, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And yeah. And, and it's, and also another thing I think is so like just helpful to, to know is Sometimes in, in my cycle, literally right before, I, like the, maybe the day of the, or the day before I'm going to start my period, I will feel, I'm usually a Zen, like, you know, very resilient woman. And all of a sudden it's like this anxiety of like, uh, like you just, you don't know what you need, but I'm, the, I know it's happening. So it helps my brain because I understand, oh shit, it's the hormones. Like they drop still not fun though, you know? No. So, you know, and then this, this, this is where I get really, uh, have gotten really curious. It's like, okay, cool. Step one, I understand what's happening. What do you do about it? Because it's mm -hmm. not. I mean, you know this as a badass health coach expert, people move through their life thinking that, you know, things that don't feel good are just normal. It's like, this is how yeah. it's not true. Well, yeah, no. And women, like we've been taught that, you know, we're just supposed to endure it. Like you're a woman, like that's just how it is. And that doesn't have to be the case. Like there are things that we can do to make that easier. And we don't have to just endure it. And we don't have to just, oh, you're, you're gonna be in pain. You're gonna get cramps. Like not necessarily, like there are things that we can do, things that we can eat, like we can manage stressors to decrease the potential of those crampy, terrible periods, um, major irritability. We can control the water retention when we're aware of it. Like knowledge is power. Yeah. I love that. It's so true. And I, you know, when we, like one of the things that really comes to mind when I think about cycle syncing and kind of staying ahead of it is the idea of recovery, like knowing, okay, well, if your progesterone is, is, is really down and, and some women we have less, like, you know, mine has been mm -hmm. lower in blood mm -hmm. labs, um, mm -hmm. you know, then, okay. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an athlete. What's my cord? I sleep good and I have, you know, healthy practices, but still there's still cortisol, you know, which is not the enemy yeah. hormone. Right. No, mm -hmm. but that ratio, that balance yeah. is Can you talk about that? Cause that's, that's obviously huge. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, and I would say most women feel like they have to do everything. Like the burden of the world is on them. And, um, 
I mean, women moving through their cycle on a monthly basis, there's so much feeling. I see a lot of clients, they feel very guilty when they don't feel like they can do all the things. But the truth is we're working to balance stressors. Like if your body is already dealing with additional stressors, then you adding in extra workout classes, uh, restricting your calories, like making extra commitments, like that's going to add to that stress and basically take you out of balance. If your body is looking to have you balanced and you add those extra things because you see the weight on the scale go up. So you're like, oh, I'm going to do extra workouts. I'm going to hit the gym harder. I'm going to do more intensity. And your body's like, hey, like my recovery is already down here. Like, why are you going to do that? That's just going to put me in a worse place. And when it's about balancing stress, like stress cortisol is okay. And it's meant to, it's like your body needs it, but there's a lot of pressure out there for women to do too much, I would say. And then they end up in a bad place overall. So the body's resources turn inward. So one thing, the immune system is actually less during the second half of the cycle because the body is trying to avoid attacking any potential embryo that might be in the uterus. So from that standpoint, like a woman's, she's more susceptible to colds. Like her stressors are higher if she's trying to do more things. And yet she's more susceptible to things that are going to put her down and also make her probably feel guilty. It's so important to say, because, you know, that's, I, I feel like that's so relatable to every woman, you know, taking this in right now. They're like, yep, that's me. You know, I mean, what woman does it feel? Um, and actually really have a lifestyle these days where it's like, they really have to take on so much, you know, whether you're a mommy, an entrepreneur, or just, you know, I mean, the list goes on and on. And I think recovery is that we don't hear about it as much. And I think there's a confusion with laziness and recovery. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. You a lot, I'm sure. Absolutely. You know, yeah. women, it's like they feel if they can't do all the things that they're somehow being lazy. And that's not the case. Like so many, I mean, women were taught to be smaller. We're taught to not talk about, you know, things like our period. We're just put in a place where I, think, I don't want to say we're viewed as weak for having these feelings, but like that does feel like the case sometimes where, you know, we're not weak though. Like women, <laughs> it, it's so hard because I see so many clients just struggle with that. And where it's like all of a sudden their bodies are being like, they're screaming. They're screaming for more recovery. They're screaming for less exercise and women view it as being weak when it's like, no, like your body needs more food. You need more rest. Like you need to listen to what your body's saying. And so often women are trained that those feelings are somehow a weakness. Like, oh no, you just lack willpower. No, like you're when your progesterone drops off, your blood sugars are unstable. Like it's not a matter of lacking willpower. It's a matter of insulin spiking and crashing. Like, hey, hello, like it's science. <laughs> exactly. It's, and, and so many women are taught that that's somehow a weakness and something that they need to be ashamed of. And that's just not the case. No, I, yeah. I mean, this is so great because, and look, I mean, obviously there are some people out there who are not as in touch and can make excuses and have those, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, women who are really doing the things and they're maintaining a healthy lifestyle and, you know, um, and then they find themselves in this position where, you know, they have to, they feel like they have to push and everything in their body is saying, please don't like, mm -hmm. this is time I mean, we are nature, right? Like I always say that, like there's no separation between us, right? Mm -hmm. And the moon cycles, like we have seasons, mm -hmm. everything cycles. Yep. And mm -hmm. to me, that makes women so badass because it just, I feel yes. so integrated, you know? And obviously mm -hmm. 
you know, our, I feel like our, our life society has been set up to, to, to be, you know, it's like testosterone full time. It's like, it's like, yes. and it's well, just like, well, there's so many pressures for women to be like men in the fact mm-hmm. that it's like testosterone all the time when really it's like, okay, you know what, what are you best suited for during each mm-hmm. part of your cycle? Because if you can excel at that during each part of your cycle and just kind of piece away at things throughout the month and have different tasks and different, you know, meetings with people during different times of the month, like you will be successful. You don't have to be go, go, go all the time. If it's, you know, like strength program wise, like I know second week of my cycle, I'm going to hit heavier weights and I can do higher intensity because I got that extra bump of testosterone. I've got extra competitiveness in me. My body's recovering fast. My blood sugars are stable. Like my serotonin and dopamine are high. And I know what to schedule during that week. I know what lifts to do. And, you know, knowing that is power. And, you know, yeah, I could do it the next week, but I want to maximize my efforts. And I want to make sure that I am as successful as possible when my body is best equipped for that. So, I mean, as women, we're taught to go, 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 but we can do better by breaking things up. Okay. This was, you're, it, I mean, I literally have chills. That was so badass. And you know what I want to point out too? What I love so much is, you know, I'm staring at an incredibly mentally and physically strong woman. So there's nothing about you that's saying, smaller, weaker, like, you know what I mean? Like, and we're, and we're talking about the menstrual cycle and female and calming down. Mm-hmm. And I just, and I love that because it just, it, it goes to show, you know, you're talking about optimization and knowing that you're an athlete and a real bad ass at, and a real bad ass athlete even just makes us more powerful. It drives me to want to ask you, and then I want to get into some of like the protocol of cycle syncing, but I want to go back to what was it in your journey that took you into this curious place to want to learn about cycle syncing? Oh man, it so, I'm like, oh, do you have time for this? Um, <laughs> yes, all day girl, I'm here. <laughs> um, it's one of those things. So let's see rewind so far (laughs) back. Um, when I, like I started working out when I was probably 18 years old with my boyfriend at the time and, you know, just developed the love for being athletic. And, you know, I, I did cross country and softball in high school. So it wasn't like major, well, I mean, they're definitely major sports, but I was definitely there for the like social aspect of it. At that point, I was good enough. Um, and then got into lifting and then like fast forward, got into personal training and wanted to teach others to do it. And I had people ask me about CrossFit and I was like, well, I've never done CrossFit, but I don't want to talk poorly about something until I do it because all the personal training certifications are like, oh, CrossFit's bad. Like so much like ballistic motion. There's no structure, whatever. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. Um, got into CrossFit, was good at CrossFit, but I wasn't so good at the nutrition aspect of things. I, you know, fell into the trap of the 12, 14, 1600 calorie diets and, you know, did paleo and worked out multiple times and didn't take rest days and carbs were bad, fats were bad. And during this time, well, even before this time, I didn't have a period. Like my doctor, as far as like going through, you know, being a teenager, getting on birth control, not having a period. And, you know, my doctor is like, well, do you have a problem with it? I'm like, I don't know. Like, should I? And at that point, like, I mean, obviously like no girl, like teenager or like, 20s, whatever is going to be like, yes, could I please have a period every month? Like at that point, you just like, you know, you don't know, like I didn't, they don't have anything in high school that teaches you about the benefits of the hormones that occur monthly. So at that point I was like, well, I mean, it's kind of inconvenient. So no, I mean, if you don't have a problem with the doc, I don't have a problem with it. 
So, you know, going through CrossFit, like I was under eating, I was under recovering. I had a ton of injuries, which, you know, I would almost say it was a, a running joke. Cause it was like, Oh, what's, what's hurt now? Like, what do you have taped up now? Like, and it wasn't until I got a nutrition coach and he had me eat more because, you know, at that point carbs were bad, but I was doing CrossFit. So knowing now like CrossFit, you need carbs, like high intensity output. You need carbs to fuel that. My fats were low because I was afraid of fats. You need fats for your hormones. Like, you know, all in all, it's like everything you need for something within your body. And it's like, carbs are not bad. Fats aren't bad. Like, you know, I was eating a ton of protein because protein gives you muscle. <laughs> anyway, right. it's one of those things I'm like, oh my God, every muscle I get is possible. It. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I got off my birth control, still didn't have a period, um, was working with a coach. We did some supplementation and, you know, got my food up to where it needed to be. And I got my period back. And it was when I got my period back that I started noticing these things associated with my cycle and strength. And, you know, when I didn't feel up to it, but yet I would try and force the process because, you know, program says do this program says high intensity every day, because honestly, like most programs out there are built for men. Like, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Sure. Like, yeah. Men yeah. whose hormones don't fluctuate and you know, there's a lot of things out there that I could probably say that about, but um, <laughs> we'll stick with this. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. Basically, I got my period back and started noticing these things. And it, the more I kind of was paid attention, the more I was like, I think there's something to this. And then, you know, going through NCI, I think I've taken like every course and every certification <laughs> through them. So you know, everything that they have is amazing and kind of helped me continue to grow and, you know, develop my knowledge for like nutrition in association with hormone fluctuations. And then also just coming from that competitive CrossFit, like athletic background, I was like, oh, and from a training standpoint, these all apply. And then to create better predictability within the cycle, I incorporated seed cycling. Because in order to know when certain things are supposed to occur, you want to have a predictable cycle. And then it was like, as I got into that, you know, more knowledge about like, if a heavy cycle is occurring, what might be going on with estrogen versus progesterone? Like, how, what are some things that we can do to support that? And I mean, it's just like grown in so many ways. And there's so many applicable places for this for both athletes as well as like mom you know menopause perimenopause like mm -hmm. there's just so much and for so long women have been taught to be quiet about things and kind of just like disregarded and I mean I've heard many stories of women going to doctors and just like oh you're just being crazy or you know that's just part of where you're at in your life. And it's like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. And there's so much application with being able to coordinate your training, your nutrition, hormonal support with helping your body stay healthy. Oh my gosh. It's so, that's so, I love it. I just, um, just going on that journey with you is just fun. And it, it and it really is, it's so, um, uh, what's the word like addicting once you start getting more information and you start, and especially when it's put into application in your own life, like you're feeling, Oh my gosh, I'm stronger right now. And then you do the scheduling and the seed cycling. I mean, it, it becomes very addicting to want to learn more. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know in my own life, I do my best and I have, this is a privilege that, you know, I've created for myself being, you know, my own boss, but, um, you know, I look at my cycle and I try to, schedule podcasts or big meetings or certain things when I know, and ironically, and this is, I, I, I can't wait for you to talk about this because people be, may be like, what? But like, when I start my period is like go time. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. now we're gonna, you know, or like you said, maybe right before ovulation, but really during that 
that time is when I know, because let's go back to when I said that there is, there have been some months where I'll feel maybe a little like anxious. The minute I start my period, it's like, I swear. (laughs) Yep. Yep. It's insane. It's not in the brain. It's like, whoa, this is a real Mm -hmm. fucking thing, you know? So Mm -hmm. knowing that and, you know, paying attention, it's like, and then learning about, you know, the science and all this, it's like, yeah, okay. I know. And fortunately for me, you know, I don't have, you know, like I'm not rolled over and having those kinds of periods. So, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a, it is the time where I feel maybe like two days after, you know, where then I'm like real fucking beast mode. Let's go. Uh-huh. So, yep. I, you know, I love that you mentioned this is for really any, any woman out there, like even uh, mm-hmm. you're in college and you have, you know, you have to cram in some hardcore studying or whatever. I mean, it's mm-hmm. all relatable. If you want to talk about that, that, that piece right there though, because I, most women do not associate their period is like go time. Yes. So, um, there's a couple of things. So like, I'm very similar. I like day one of my period. It's like, I know that my period's coming before it hits because all of a sudden I'm like, Oh yeah, let's get something done today. Like I, I feel good. And you know, that's not always the case with every woman. Um, some women have rollover inflammation from the last part of their cycle. So some women, it might take a day or so for them to feel that way. Um, I've also taken a neurotyping certification, which I look forward to applying it to this because it has to do with different neurotypes and how they're more sensitive to certain neurotransmitters like GABA and serotonin and dopamine. So I'd be interested to see what your neurotype is because I feel like it would be similar to mine, which would make you more sensitive to like serotonin and dopamine, which is something that sorry, huh? I'm so sorry, I cut you off. I was I was just gonna ask you, how do you test that? So I have a test that I could send you, basically a series of about a hundred questions, and based off of how you respond, you're given a neurotype, and there's certain things in regards to how you handle stress, um, what like neurotransmitters you're more receptive to or more sensitive to. Um, it can also kind of go into training. So depending on neurotypes, sometimes there's more fast twitch versus slow twitch muscle fibers. Um, so I would be curious because this is kind of a new thing that I'm looking into that I'm studying in regards to different women and how they feel at the beginning of their cycle, because I do think there is something to that and um, their neurotype and what they're more sensitive to. But I digress. Let me get back. (laughs) So some women may have um, a little extra inflammation in those first couple of days, depending on the health of a woman's cycle, because really a woman's period is her monthly report card. Like if it's heavy versus if it's light, if it's crampy, if it's, you know, smooth sailing, like, you know, those things are all telling a woman what her lifestyle is telling the body. So understanding that it's like okay like your period showed up terrible versus like someone else's period that showed up you know just showed up like that's where my period's gone to like since implementing this stuff my period shows up like I know it's coming I don't have any sort of major cramping like water retention I've actually gotten a pretty good hold on Um, I only see a weight fluctuation of like a pound or two versus I used to see like a three to five pound weight fluctuation. So yeah. (laughs) So there are things that you can do nutritionally speaking and managing stress and inflammation to help your period show up better. So that day one is go time. Uh, It's so good. Can we dive into some of the protocol? Because, um, you know, I, and it's interesting because it it really is a mindset thing too. Like I love to Mm -hmm. push um, mm-hmm. I have so many different modalities of movement, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I, I do a lot of sprint work. Um, I resistance training is a staple. It's, I love it. Um, you know, on the, on the occasion, um, 
I do like long distance uh, sand runs, which I also love. So, I mean, just and hot yoga. So like I move, I do a shit ton of walking. It's kind of a joke because people think Mm -hmm. I beast mode all the time. I'm like, no, I don't actually. (laughs) Yeah. They just, they see shoulders and like, oh my God, you must work out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nope. I do a lot of walking, but the mindset piece is interesting because listen, even this morning, it's the perfect example I'm, I think I'm day, I can't, I can't remember exactly, but I think I'm like day 18 or 19, no, day like 20 now um, in my cycle. And I, I'm starting to feel, I, I, and I didn't recover well from, from last night. I did a carbon dioxide test and I'm like, okay, yeah, damn it. Cause I wanted to get up and sprint. I wanted to go do sprints. And it's like this game where I'm like, do I, put, and I'm like, no, we're not gonna push. You yeah. didn't pass the test this morning. You know where you are in your cycle. You need to perform for the rest of your day. Like mm-hmm. pull, pull it back, girl. So it, it, it's yep. active rest day, lots of walking, yeah. but low key. So just sharing my protocol because, um, you know, that's like kind of the base of where I'm at, but I feel like I can even be doing more and learn from, from you about how to get even deeper into this game of, you know, cycle syncing and even the seed, I, I don't do that, but if you want to talk about some of the methods, I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That would be great. Okay. I'm like, oh, where do we start? So like for me during the first part of my cycle, I will do short sprints. And during the second part of my cycle, I do longer intervals. Um, I will do um, lower reps, heavier weight during the first part of my cycle, and then higher reps, lower weight. So more of that bodybuilding, like hypertrophy type training. Um, I incorporate nose breathing only into my exercise during the second half of my cycle, because that is a way to control. It's kind of like my speed governor. Um, when I want, because as someone so from CrossFit, it's like, you just, you were trained to go, go, go all the time. So, you know, I needed, I needed a speed governor. I needed a way to like hold myself back, but still feel like I was pushing. Mm -hmm. So incorporating nose breathing was the way I did that. And come to find out there's quite a few benefits of nose breathing. Like you can actually increase your lung capacity and the amount of oxygen that's delivered to your muscles. If you can get those really deep breaths, you can actually, they say, tickle the vagus nerve, which has a relaxing effect on the body. So taking you to more of that rest and recover state. So I generally incorporate it into like metabolic conditioning sets where I'm only allowed to breathe through my nose. But during the first half of my cycle, during the follicular phase, I am like speed governor (laughs) off, let's go make it hurt. Um, So that as far as like training is concerned is what I do for training. I also, so from a nutritional standpoint, I incorporate more fats and higher proteins during the luteal phase and incorporate more carbs when my body has better blood sugar stability during the follicular phase, which also feeds into my training because I am doing higher intensity during that time as well. And then as far as seed cycling is concerned, basically what seed cycling is, is a way to give your body the building supplies that it needs to build up estrogen and detox harmful forms of it and build up progesterone and detox any sort of harmful forms of estrogen or other hormones that it may encounter during that time of the month as well. So basically just gently nudging your body in the direction that we want it to be in. That's so great. Cause I think another subject that I'm really just geeking out on is estrogen detox Um, And it's a big one, but it's really important because a lot of people, you know, aren't, I mean, men and women aren't detoxing estrogen well, and and that's a problem. And I mean, even just for like a reference point, you know, I know like if you get like really big sore boobs, you know, that's like, that's estrogen, right? And you're not, you're not, it it is potentially a sign that you're not detoxing. Well, and that's also where progesterone comes in to kind of balance out right? Like yep. they're like the sister yin hormones. To the yang. Yep. Mm-hmm. The yin to the yang. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the seed thing is very, very cool. I just love how, you know, nature provides. It's like, there's the food that's helping us to, you know, stay optimal and, and yeah. healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in the end, like it is about food. Like I know a ton of supplements that can help with certain things, 
But when I look at a client, I'm looking at what is the, the root cause of what they're doing. Like, I'm not going to, I can give you supplements that are going to kind of help offset things for the moment, but they are not a life. Like you're not going to do that for the rest of your life. You're not going to take supplements for the rest of your life. So what is it within your nutrition and your lifestyle that is causing these imbalances that maybe you're experiencing? I love that. Yeah, it's so, it's so true. I mean, I know in my own cycle, you know, in the luteal phase, I, I doubled down on the protein and I'm already protein centric, but when those cravings come and I'm not a big sweet, I mean, I love dark chocolate and, you know, coconut sugar sweetened by stevia, but there's no insulin spike there, but so just, just putting it out there that, you know, I'm, I'm not the girl who really kind of, Oh my God, give me the cookies and the cake. But girl, I will tell you, there are some, <laughs> there have been some cycles like recently where I, I don't know. Do you know Hugh Kitchen, the, the, um, the chocolate? Mm. Oh my gosh. No, I'm but I feel like I need to. You, you do. <laughs> and I, I, I'll, I'll gift this to you. Um, <laughs> it's like with the best chocolate, so clean, just simple ingredients. And I have taken down a whole bag where I'm like, and I have, you know, I, I don't want to say it's like I have discipline because it's almost applying that like I have to force my kind of boundaries around my food, but no, it's, I'm, I am more harmonized in my diet to where I don't feel this, but there have been times where, and that could also be the result for sure of like the hormones and everything, but it's the lack of recovery that could be right. Pushing you in that direction. So there's a few things that could be going on there. So if we think, you know, it's occurring in the second half of your cycle during the second half, serotonin and dopamine drop off. So chocolate is actually like you get more dopamine by consuming chocolate. So if your dopamine is low, you're going to reach for something that's going to elicit a similar response. So carbs are that serotonin response. So when we get super carb cravings and sugars, like that's our body having less serotonin. So we can get support from that by eating enough protein. And yes, eat the chocolate. Like if you want the chocolate, like maybe not the entire bag, but. <laughs> Unless it's you, you know? no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to try this. So I know. Yes. Yes. I got you. So protein does um, have the building blocks needed for serotonin and dopamine. So tryptophan is one of those. So you can so get it from cool. Turkey, eat more protein. <laughs> I love it. Let me ask you, I want to touch on um, these two things too, because, you know, intermittent fasting is obviously a huge trend. And I, you know, we don't, I, how I want to integrate it into this part of the conversation is, um, well, there are many things about it that are, and can be beneficial depending on your lifestyle and who you are and your whole biology. Um, ultimately it is a stressor on the body, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. can you talk about you know, for our girls here who do love intermittent fasting and how that works in terms of your cycle, like when is the best time? When do you maybe want to back off? So women are more susceptible or their bodies respond to excessive amounts of stress. So being in a caloric deficit, which generally that is the intention of intermittent fasting is to be in a caloric deficit. I, I will say, so recently I, it was a group that I was a part of. A woman posted that she was doing keto. She was intermittent fasting and she was eating two meals a day and doing cardio and doing resistance training and was wondering why she wasn't losing weight. And I was like, the body from a hormone standpoint, like our bodies are not meant to handle that much stress. Like it's too much. So, you know, from a hormone standpoint, I would say, um, when I suggest, if someone wants to do intermittent fasting, I don't recommend longer than 16 hours. Um, generally, I think 12 hours is probably appropriate. Um, as far as like, what were you going to say? Go ahead. No, oh, I was going to say, um, in the cycle. As far as where in the cycle, you would do it when your body can handle stress, more stress. So during the follicular phase. That's amazing. And I think, isn't, I mean, is it true that, I mean, obviously everybody's body is different, but like in the follicular phase, when we can tend to be just have feel less hungry. I know that some women are 
so maybe this then ultimately boils down to kind of the health of, of your body and because that's not going to be mm-hmm. the case some women kind of just binge during that that cycle yeah. but that can maybe mm-hmm. be a bio you know that's biofeedback that you you're not in optimal health mm-hmm. or your cycle isn't yeah if someone is binging during the follicular phase, yes, I would say that's definitely showing that maybe they are in too much of a caloric deficit and their body is responding by triggering cravings because the body is going to, I mean, it's, it's going to tell you, feed me like this is too much. So like there is a better way to diet throughout phases. Um, I believe it was an Oxford study where they actually show that women have a higher metabolism during the luteal phase. So Mm -hmm. if you're in a caloric deficit in the follicular phase, then you just steepen that deficit in the luteal phase. So potentially creating too much of a stressor at a time when your body is already overly stressed. So that could be one of the yeah, no, no, no. I was gonna say, you know, it's so cool. And Jason was actually someone who really brought this to my attention. Just the concept of food being, a, a you know, a, either a stressor or recovery um, mm-hmm. methodology, meaning like, like you said, calorie deficit, stressor to the body, mm-hmm. more nutritious meals, higher calories, more recovery to the body. But yes. I, I would bet anything that most people aren't thinking, oh, food is recovery, you know? Mm -mm. Yes. And I think most people, so, you know, when I refer to carbs, I've, I like fruits and vegetables are carbs. I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't eat carbs. And it's like, well, do you eat fruits and vegetables? Well, yeah, I eat those. Those are carbs. Um, So I think that there is a lot of misinformation out there because I was talking specifically, I was talking to someone about keto and I was like, well, you're not going to get the vitamins and minerals that you need from carbs and fiber. And they're like, you don't need that many carbs. And I was like, you're not, what in the keto diet are you getting your fibers and minerals and nutrients from if you are not eating fruits and vegetables, which by the way, are carbs. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like this, wait a second, like fruits and vegetables are carbs. Yes. Like I'm not talking, like, I think a lot of people are like, Oh, you're talking about pizza. What do you mean? I can eat carbs, right? Pizza, bread, cake, whatever. I'm like, no, those are, those are in moderation. Like those are part of life and shouldn't be removed, but shouldn't be done in excess. Yeah. I mean, that's media, you know, it's like, it's so true Mm -hmm. that people have absorbed this concept of Oh, bread, pizza, cake, carbs. But then I don't mm-hmm. eat that because I don't, you know, it's like no, I mean, I have people who think I don't eat carbs. I'm like, girl, I have a sweet potato every night before bed. I'm raising my serotonin and I enjoy my fucking sweet potato. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yep. Not to mention, let's talk about the boss of your metabolism and really overall health, your thyroid. Mm-hmm. Um, no carb means not happy thyroid means exactly. <laughs> a lot exactly. Of shitty things. <laughs> Seriously, I, yeah, yeah, I can't tell you how many people I'm like, no, your thyroid needs carbs. No, 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 I don't need carbs. Yes, you do. You do. And, it's not, and obviously, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say it. It's not till they start eating carbs. That they're like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. And I was like, right. yeah, it's good. It feels good to feel good. Don't it? Right. And I mean, I mean, obviously everybody's body and lifestyle is so, you know, just different and it's complex. So it's, it's, um, it's hard to kind of, you know, people take these broad, broad, you know, concepts and ideas and, you know, apply it to them. And it may not necessarily work because like, listen, if you are a, an athlete, then you, you're eating carbs, like Mm high-performing, you know, if, oh, yeah. right. So it's, you know, it depends on what your goals are. It depends on your lifestyle and, and, and where you, you currently are with your health. But overall, the other concept that I, you know, when I think about diet is like the reality of taking out a macro or an essential, like for the rest mm-hmm. of your life, is that realistic? No, no. Like, why would you do that? I'm always like, like, why do you hate yourself? Like, no, like everything has its place. Like, like all food is good and should be enjoyed. 
I mean, my my boyfriend and I, we we I don't know if you've seen this, but we do like cinnamon roll reviews sometimes. Which, by the way, there's a, a time in the month where cinnamon roll reviews are better than the other time, which is when we do burger reviews. Uh, but <laughs> I did in your your amazing Facebook group. I did see some stuff about cinnamon roll, but I didn't know that you have uh, like an ongoing review. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, um, we probably so tried cool. like. 15 plus cinnamon rolls we started doing it during covid because we were like oh. you know what let's like just have a weekend date where we go to a coffee shop or bakery that we've never been to and try a cinnamon roll and oh so gosh. it became a thing and people started sending us like you must go here you must go there and so yeah we oh we see, that is so cute that's amazing mm -hmm. and a burger review i mean sign me up yeah oh like. i had a peanut butter and jelly burger which was surprisingly delicious wow i'm oh yeah. wow i mean i guess <laughs> salty sweet right yes it was and then the fat. it was like a berry jelly and then the peanut butter on a burger and i was like i was a little hesitant but one bite and i was sold I can see that. I mean, I eat bison for breakfast. I'm so my, <laughs> I do my, my, my protein, my, my ground, um, or grass fed beef and my nuts. That's my breakfast. Not always, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I would say more than, more than half the time. Mm -hmm. Um, let me ask you, is there something that you're seeing right now in the health and nutrition world that kind of just triggers you and frustrates you? Like, ugh. I just want to tap into mm. that. And then I want to do the where, flip. Where do I start? Um, I know, right? There's some, you're like Instagram. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Some days I'm just like, what is this? Um, <laughs> gosh, there's so many things. Gosh, it's really hard to pick just one. Um, under consumption, like women being taught that somehow like 1200, 1400, even 1600 calories is like, depending on what they're doing is where they need to be for fat loss. Like women being taught to eat less and do more. Like that just breaks my heart. When I see people in groups that are like, I'm consuming 1200 calories. I have all these cravings. I feel like crap. I couldn't go to the gym today. I feel like I'm a loser. And it's like, no, you are not like, like your body is screaming for help right now. And there is nothing that you are doing that's creating failure. So those things, I would say the fact that that is still so popular breaks my heart. And um, like is one of the many things that really gets me from the hormone standpoint, women just feeling like their periods are, somehow wrong and you know that they need to be sh ashamed of it or quiet about it just because they they really just lack the knowledge to understand it because understanding is where you get power like you know whether it be your monthly cycle whether it be transitioning through or to menopause like through perimenopause like understanding is where the power is like if you understand why you feel a certain way, it is empowering and it will take you better places. So I think, you know, it's the, from the hormonal standpoint, it's how women have been taught to be ashamed and be quiet about their period and be quiet about their period problems. And hormonal birth control is the answer because it's not, and it actually leads to more problems and I just think there needs to be more education around birth control specifically, because just, you know, growing up, it's the answer for everything. Like you go right. to the doctor, you have acne, there's a birth control. You have a heavy period, birth control. You don't have a period, birth control. Like, and who knows, like, I mean, those are just some of the main ones that I've seen a lot of, but there's tons of other reasons that it's like just the candy, like, here you go. You got a problem? Take this. And no, nowhere was I told the problems that I may encounter long-term or the things like the vitamins and minerals that it was depleting in my body, like how it was burdening my liver and, you know, causing the potential of my body not being able to detox properly, which was one of the things that we focused on when I did get my period was supporting my liver 
and its ability to detox because all your hormones have to go through your liver to be reduced to metabolites to be removed. So when people have higher levels of estrogen, like that could be something that's going on that's causing recirculation of estrogen metabolites. So yeah, Ugh. I think the lack of knowledge and support that's out there is one of the biggest things that just kind of really gets my goat and lights my fire. Oh, it's so huge. And when you think about, you know, all the knowledge that you have attained, um, you know, what specifically around the menstrual cycle and how the role of the menstrual cycle in, in our bodies are, you know, as female and then not knowing, and it's so true, you know, I was on birth control from, I don't know, I was like 17 to, I want to, I can't remember exactly. I think I got off it when I was 24 or something like that. And I remember, I so remember this, like, you know, those memories that just stand out here. I mean, this is like yep. two decades ago. I just remember going, wow, I cry a lot less, you know, like it was, a, it was, and then you think about, so now I, going back to where I was, they just hand this shit out and this mm -hmm. shit, this birth control is literally, it's it, the menstrual cycle is vital for our health, our well being, yeah. and the birth control. And I'm not, it's not like saying, okay, I'm anti, I'm not saying that, but it's like, how do you just give this thing that is completely altering the ultimate kind of lever to our fucking health and well being? And you have no education. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, I think it's a, a systemic thing in, in terms of like how, you know, what they're, they're taught as doctor. I don't, I don't know, but I just think it's fucking wrong. I'm with you. It's like, if you're going to be handing out birth control, I don't care what method it is. Women, girls need to understand doctors. You need to understand. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what, what the prepare them for the imbalances yes. for the things right empower yes. them with that knowledge your doctor mm -hmm. back in the day was like i mean are you cool with it not having a period <laughs> like, what the yeah fuck is that? like are you fine with it yeah i know i'm like i don't know should i be worried <laughs> if you're fine with it i'm fine with it and i was like okay well i guess we're fine with it then i mean it's like, i don't know <laughs> It's so sad. It's crazy. And I think, and, you know, obviously we, we're talking about cycle syncing and how to optimize your well-being and your energy and to be, you know, this kind of superhero. But this is, you know, if you're on birth control now, this is a different, it's a whole different subject, right? Because you're not, and I don't even know, I don't even know what you do with that. Um, you know, I, I don't even know what you do with that, but yeah, birth control is like a whole nother Thing. It's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> whole nother. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, let me ask you on the flip now, is there anything out there that you're seeing, you know, in, in your space, um, health and fitness that is inspiring you right now, that's getting you really excited and just make you feel good? Um, this actually seeing this come out more, seeing more people talk about it, seeing more people talk about their periods and it's not as taboo as it used to be uh i think that is inspiring me because it's like yes like we're doing something right like we're getting the knowledge out there like inspiring women like empowering women and that i love that i love that i'm seeing it more and i love that people feel more comfortable talking about their periods and aren't hiding you know, negative things that are happening. They're like, Hey, this is going on with me. Like, like, how can we fix this? And yeah, I just, I love that. I'm with you girl. I mean, it's literally what has connected me to you. I'm so ex <laughs> you know, grateful and excited to be so connected. And, um, and I am seeing it much more, maybe it's because I'm interested and curious, but also I think it is because it is becoming more part of the conversation and thank goddess. <laughs> Yes. Things do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I, uh, there's a question I love to ask all of my, my guests. And uh, the question is if you had a magic wand and you can give the masses one positive habit that would have a large positive impact on their life, what would it be and why? And it could be anything. Mm. Can I do two? Of course. Okay. Sleep. And drink your water. 
Like those are huge. Like sleep is important Cheers. for your hormone recovery. Yes. <laughs> I love yeah. the water. Um, yes, drink all the water, like get sleep, build bedtime routines, build wake routines, um, turn off your cell phone, disconnect and get quality sleep. Your body will thank you for it. Your body composition will th thank you for it. Your hormones will thank you for it. I love it. I'm with you. Say it louder in the back. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. Um, Jen, thank you so much. You are such a contributor. You're helping so many, so many people. And I just, like I said, I'm so grateful to have, you know, connected with you. I look forward to just fortifying a relationship to learn more from you and ultimately to be supporting you more because your message, your voice and everything that you're putting out is really, really important. So I'm like literally turning up the volume on you. Um, <laughs> Is, can you please direct our listeners or viewers to all the channels to, to stay connected to you, to maybe dive into your Facebook group? And, you know, I know you have a, a program coming out soon that we touched on. Share all mm -hmm. the things. Okay. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Jen underscore MF Nutrition. Um, on Facebook, Jen with two N's, marker like a pen. My private Facebook group is Cycle Thinking Secrets. Um, let's see my client program, which has training, nutrition and hormone support. So coaching with me is called my evolution athlete program. It's a three month program and my coaches program, um, is coming out. I think my first weekend zoom, I'm doing it via zoom for the weekend. And that is on June 12th and 13th. And that's my cycle connection program. And yeah, I think. Awesome. That's it. Um, that's a lot. I mean, that's amazing. I, uh, I'm I like, should I give my cell phone number? People can text me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right? I'm like, you want my address? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. Oh, girl, I've had so much fun with you. Thanks.